Good morning and welcome once again to Digital Look TV. Joining us today is Angus Campbell. He's Senior Analyst at FX Pro. Angus, thank you very much for joining us. Pleasure. Okay, we had this morning just out the Financial Stability Review. What do we make of it? Good? Bad? How much so? Well, interesting, really. I think that, funnily enough, I was watching uh, Channel 4 News last mm -hmm. night. And they did a report, and this very, very interesting report. Housing bubbles, it's going to be popped, mm -hmm. and sort of really sort of laying the groundwork for a complete property crash. And what Mark Carney has said today is that, you know, what he's doing is sort of readying the banks mm. to make sure that they don't let the market run away with itself. Right. Yes, house prices in London hmm. have risen a lot in the last two, three years. But if you just uh, put a little bit, take a little bit of the steam out of it, hmm. then you're sort of preparing things to, uh, to, to, to catch up. And so his sort of uh, view is, is that I think a lot of people were expecting him to take more drastic action than okay. he has. Critical. Mm -hmm. But he said... Look, my job is stability. My mm -hmm. job is not to cause a housing bubble or anything like that, or all that bubble to burst. Hmm. And he hasn't mentioned you know, anything about there being a housing bubble. So um, he is there to create stability uh, and ensure that a degree of action is taken now to ensure that there are no bubbles uh, created or bubbles burst in the future. Um, his prediction is, uh, if you believe any of the stuff that uh, he, he predicts, because of course forward guidance has been thrown out the window and he hasn't got a particularly good track record, but Indeed. He, he says that um, you know, he expects house prices to increase 20% over the next three years, mm. up to a maximum of 45%. Quite a bit. That, 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 yeah, well, certainly in, when you're looking at London prices, but you, you compare London, uh, it's a completely different place compared to the rest of the UK, right. where affordability okay. is... is, is um, that little bit better. Um, but what we're, what we're seeing is banks are already taking action mm -hmm. on uh, house prices. You were uh, mentioning this before the interview. In yes. Mortgage lending. Mm -hmm. um, give you an example, my own personal circumstance. Okay. My mortgage is coming up for review. Uh, I spoke to my bank. I said, uh, you know, the property uh, price has gone up over the past two years. May I release some equity? And they said that, um, unfortunately, there's no way that even we would allow you to release £5,000 of equity. That would not be affordable to you. Now, of course, my circumstances haven't really changed very much. Uh, any new mortgage rate would be lower than the one uh, that I'm currently on. Uh, but yet, uh, £5,000 over 30 years is unaffordable to me. So it's clear that the banks are taking things seriously. Very uh, they're ensuring that uh, they're, the, the affordability tests are much more stringent. And so you will just see the froth come off the, off the housing market at the moment. Mm -hmm. And we're already seeing that in London. Um, there's a few more properties coming onto the market. And, uh, and so people aren't getting ridiculous uh, offers for, for the, uh, the, when they put their property on mm -hmm. the market now. So, so things are shifting uh, and maybe just realigning themselves. And that's what Mark Carney is trying to do is just make the market realign itself. Okay, so bankers are, are being conservative. Yeah, I as think they should so. be. Yeah. Okay, however, Mr. Carney does seem to have made some enemies among the Treasury Select Committee. The phrase I believe that was employed was something along the lines of an errant boyfriend, more Un or less. Unreliable boyfriend. Unreliable boyfriend. Yeah, That's I mean, you know, uh, uh, MPs love to grab the headlines, and it was rather amusing. But I think that, you know, when you look back at the Mansion House speech, um, <laughs> as you were saying earlier, one line really was focused on there, and he was suddenly called a hawk and was um, you know, saying that the, you know, effectively that bank will raise rates this year and much, much, much sooner than expected. But in mm. fact, really the focus of the speech, as you said, was not purely on that. He remains pretty dovish, Mark Carney. What you've got to appreciate is that, yes, rates will rise. For me, I think the early part of 2015, um, certainly I would have thought Q1, mm -hmm. uh, if they don't you know, go in 2014, and a few people do believe that is going to be the case. Um, but wage growth is still very, very low. Inflation is still below target. And inflation is only going to remain capped because sterling continues to appreciate. So uh, I, I don't see um, the bank moving, really, uh, until 2015. Uh, and, and, you know, after all, the governor is 
is quite dovish. What will be interesting is how the minutes pan out next month. So uh, come next week's uh, interest rate decision, um, when we see the minutes at the end of July, will there be that first vote for a hike? Mm. Um, possibly, but you, you, you know, you've got to see many more MPC members vote for a hike. So All right. I think we're a way off. Okay, so would you agree with, if I said bankers are essentially doing their job, bankers and central bankers, being conservative on both sides? Well, they are being more conservative mm. and they're, 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 they have to be because the last thing they want is a situation that we experienced in 2008 again mm -hmm. after such a short space of time. Indeed, we don't want to see that again. No. Okay, your dollar. FX Pro was not very bearish at the start of this year. That was a bit perhaps outside of the money, a bit contrarian. Mm. What's your view now on that currency pair? Yeah, very much so. I mean, I think the dynamics uh, haven't shifted too much. Um, I mean, the euro area uh, at the time and still is, is running a, a current account surplus. So, it is. Um, you know, uh, European equities risk assets were looking cheap and the bond peripheral bond yields were falling uh, and confidence was really improving towards the mm -hmm. euro zone because, uh, you know, things weren't as bad as they were before. And so um, the euro did well out of that. It never hit our targets. We were a bit more bullish on the euro than mm -hmm. we uh, have seen it materialise in the first half of 2014. Uh, and we think that, that certainly the euro will remain underpinned, but maybe soften latter part of H2. Towards where? Towards the, the, the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, back towards the 1.3 level. Okay. So no major mm -hmm. correction, uh, but maybe a little bit of a softening as the dollar, the expectation really is that for the dollar, it's not going to run away, but it's going to possibly reassert itself, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. despite the dire GDP numbers yesterday. The services data survey was very, very good. Uh, expect the, the, um, that GDP number to bounce back very strongly. Mm -hmm. uh, and so euro dollar should, should remain capped. Uh, and, 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 you know, the ECB after all is, is looking to remain you know, you know, sort of in an easing Definitely uh, so. situation. <clears throat> After yesterday's very soft uh, US GDP data, um, perhaps traders now will be focusing somewhat more on next week. Next week's non-far payrolls. Do you agree with that? You foresee solid data in the US? Yes, I mean, the employment data obviously is very important for the US. The, I suppose everyone's underestimated just what an effect that winter had on the US economy. I mean, we saw it in the UK a few years ago, and um, the UK economy dipped back into recession for one quarter uh, when, uh, after a very harsh winter. Uh, and, and the US is, it just goes to show, you know, the US is a vast economy. Uh, it just goes to show how bad that winter was. Uh, and, and it really did knock uh, the, the wind out of the sails. But the wind is due to come back. As I say, those services numbers were much better. The consumer confidence number, uh, number this week was much better than expected. Uh, and so the economy should bounce back very, very well. And if mm -hmm. we see a continued sort of uh, decent non-farm payroll number, then, you know, by uh, any stretch, the euro and the, the dollar should, as I say, just potentially re you know, reassert itself towards the end of the year. Okay, fantastic. Moving on to another geography, Japan. Dollar yen. It's a currency pair that a lot of traders like to trade. Keen interest. But it's very hard for traders to fight against central banks who have been essentially damping volatility levels. So we've had very, very narrow trading ranges in many sorts, of, many securities, many financial assets, certainly in dollar yen. I think yeah. over the last month, yeah. <clears throat> somebody was commenting to me earlier that we've seen it move in a range of roundabouts 100 pips, which is almost nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What can we expect? This past week, we had Abe. He pulled out his third arrow, which was a bit limp. A bit blunt. A bit blunt, right, blunt. So, yeah, I mean, what can we expect? Yeah, it's it certainly, we don't see dollar yen doing too much actually for the mm -hmm. rest of the year and that's mainly because uh, as we said you know a blunt arrow from Abe because the bank the central bank has done its part mm -hmm. and uh, it's now up for the government to continue with its reforms the sort of fiscal measures that it's implementing um, you know it's giving with one hand taking away with another it's mm -hmm. cutting corporate tax and then raising consumer tax it's not really reforming uh, the economy 
to make it stronger, make it more productive. So the problem with Japan, of course, is that you've got a declining economy, you've got an aging Certainly. economy, and mm. its labour market is shrinking. And you know, you have uh, on the one hand, uh, you know, uh, sort of um, a, a male workforce that's paid. Mm. A huge amount more than, than, than the female workforce, okay. uh, and and on the whole, uh, it's not as productive as it, as it should be. It needs mm-hmm, some mm-hmm. sort of reform to change okay. that. Interesting. Mm-hmm. And it's, they're not doing that. And they're not doing that. So Abe's measures are not addressing that problem. Therefore, you're not going to necessarily see the Japanese economy bounce as well as maybe he was hoping, mm-hmm. you're not necessarily going to see it inflate either. So what happens then? Well, maybe the Bank of Japan has to step back in. So we're sort of pretty tentative on, on dollar yen. Yes, we think it will uh, you know, go a little bit higher again as the dollar tentatively mm-hmm. reasserts itself, but no major move, and I think it will take some time for the yen to weaken significantly, okay. if indeed it does. Would you risk giving us um, some guidance, exactly where the dollar-yen might end the year, for example? Well, as I mentioned, I think that the ranges are going to be pretty tight. Again, probably towards the end of the year, 105, 107. 105, 107. Tops. Okay. So your dollar heading lower by the end of the year, towards 130? Yes. Yeah. Dollar-yen, 105, 107. Cable? Cable, thinking 173, okay. you know, um, it's a case of uh, the Bank of England is going to be the first major central bank to move first. Um, pretty certain of that. Um, at least that's what the evidence suggests. And the uh, strength in sterling is underpinned, you know. And, and so whilst we do expect dollar to maybe strengthen a little bit towards the end of the year, not so much against sterling. Mm-hmm. Okay. Angus Campbell, Senior Analyst, FX Pro. Thank you very much for your time. And that's all from us here at Digital Look. Once again, thank you very much for your time.